everyone and welcome to Our World, Our World Power Show here with Lady Pauline and the Honorable Mayor of Southern Boulevard, my co-host. Welcome everybody. Welcome. Today, today we have a, a very special guest, um, somebody that I've been wanting to interview for the past like six months, uh, Tom Gretsch, President, CEO of Queen's Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, 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 welcome. welcome, welcome. Pauline and Glenn, thank you so, so much. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. You're very welcome. We're very welcome. And I, yeah, I, um, I'll start off by uh, asking you a few questions. Um, I see that the Queen's Chamber of Commerce is the oldest and the largest business uh, association in Queens. Can you please tell us a little bit about what you all do and what you do for the community? Yes, ma'am, and thank you so much again. So, founded in 1911, we're uh, well into our uh, our first century of uh, of activity. And you know, I talk about it all the time. Um, if you look at some of the archives from back then, of course, um, many many of the folks that were there uh, at that time in 1911 and the 50 or 60 years past represented and built the community of Queens to what it was. If you think about the history of New York City and the surrounding areas, you know. Um, Queens and Brooklyn, for that matter, are part of the geography of Long Island. And so for many, many years, Queens was a place that people traveled through. Goods, goods from, from the east end of Long Island, oysters, seafood, produce especially, came on at first wagons and then trains to feed the growing population of New York City as a whole. And so those trains and so on came through Queens and went to the city, which is what was always called the city, of Manhattan. And now we've changed in such a way that Queens is really no longer a place you travel through, but it's more of a place that you travel to as a destination. Uh, commerce, of course, has changed in all these years, but we are now a destination. If we were the, if we were a city, Queens would be the fourth largest city. And the Queens Chamber, to precisely ask, answer your question, Pauline is, the Chamber's there to help all things business. We also have a special way of looking at things by doing well, by doing good. So we help in a whole number of different areas, whether it's food drives, toy drives, a not-for-profit committee, what have you. We really want to be the backbone of the Queen's business scene and beyond. Okay, that sounds good. I also um, read somewhere, and I want to quote you, I count my blessings every day for the job I have. I have the best job in the world. Yeah, I do. I, I truly, truly do. Um, everybody had their had their challenges dur during COVID. Sometimes it was uh, health, whether it was mental health or physical health. I had my own challenges with my own personal physical health, and I'm really glad to be here today. When I when I see people, and Glenn knows this, I've seen Glenn on a regular basis. When I say I'm happy to see you, I am really happy to see you, and that goes <laughs> for you as well, Pauline. But you know, it's yes. all about doing well by doing good. We're only put on this earth for a very, very short time. And my job is to make sure that the small businesses and large for that matter in Queens get their due and are able to stand out tall on the, on the global stage. Tom, one of the things that, that you've been a champion for is Queens Day up in Albany. Um, tell folks a little bit about, about that and, and how that got started and, and why it's such a big deal. Thank you, Glenn. I'm a big believer in giving credit where credit is due. And I must give credit to former borough president, M Melinda Katz, who's now our borough, who's now our DA. She came to me in 2017 and said, what's a good date for you? And I said, for what? We're going to go to Albany. And I'm thinking it was going to be me and her. And let, little did I know that there was a, you know, there was a, a thought process of now is the time to have Queens Day in Albany. And so from that little seed, that little start and that gentle push, from then borough president Katz. Now it's an all out effort where we bring up over 400 people, 50 or 60 restaurants, and we have a ball up there um, serving the, the cuisine and the food of Queens, of Queens County to our members, to our friends, and especially to all of our electeds. I love the fact that folks up there that are Queens centric and Queens focused in the assembly and Senate, people like Alicia Hyman, people like Leroy Comrie, push their friends that are in the assembly from other areas to come try our food and brag about it being the best. So it's a great, great event that brings a lot of different people 
especially focused to Queens County. And we're looking forward to having ours again this year. In, you know, one of those, one of the, the benefits of that is that you really get to see the, the diversity of Queens when you come out. You see the restaurants that you guys pick and some of them, the breweries that we have in, in Queens. You know, um, there's so many uh, facets of business um, and, and especially food that uh, we just don't get enough opportunities. And Queens Day in Albany really is a way of bringing that out and really championing the, you know, all of the, the businesses and, and the restaurants that uh, are part of this, uh, of this day and, and part of the borough. Glenn, so you thank know you it for well. that. You, you know it well. So we, we pitch all of our assembly members from Queens and all of our um, senators from the Queens delegation to recommend their favorites and, and places in their district. And that's how we select the restaurants. And so we want to bring them all up there. As I mentioned before about the wonderful Senator Comrie getting people to, hey, you got to try this, you got to try that, whether it's the Door restaurant, which is one of my favorites in Southeast Queens, or other places across the borough. We want to uh, you know, brag loud and proud. And I'll tell you, in 2023, um, we just uh, put it on our calendar, we're going to have Queens Day in Washington, D.C. Um, we really? Are great, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. We're oh, in a cool. Great place. Yeah, we're in a great place. But besides our wonderful Queens congressional delegation, so well led by uh, Greg Meeks and Grace Mang and so on, we're in a great place. And so now we've got the added bonus of, in addition to Senator Gillibrand and Senator Schumer, who have been very, very good to Queens. And now yes. we've got Hakeem Jeffries, right? So we intend to make it a really, really big day, um, right down to the fact that we're going to get a train car from the Amtrak Reserve just for the Queens Chamber members to get on that car and go down in style uh, by Amtrak from New York Penn Station to D.C. and really show the folks in D.C. that Queens County has arrived. All right. All right. That is awesome. That, that is, is awesome. That's great. Tom, I would like you to be a little bit more specific as to what do the Chamber of Commerce actually do for businesses? A great question. So since 1911, we educate, we advocate, and we network. It's in my mission. It's in my bylaws. Educate, advocate, and network. And so how we go about that is vastly, vastly different from 1911. We too have changed with the times. But when it comes to education, we spend a lot of time in multiple languages educating the entire um, Queens County business community about some of the things that are available. You know, a lot of folks like to knock government, whether it's state, city, or federal. But I will tell you, we have a great rapport with the services and the, and the organizations that support small businesses. For example, at the city level, small business services. We had a great rapport with um, uh, Janelle Doris before when he was commissioner. Now sure. we have a great rapport with uh, Kevin Kim. They've got wonderful services for members uh, of the community, and we bring those services to people. On, on the state level, we work very, very closely with Empire State Development, as you folks know, so wonderfully and capably led by our friend across the board, Hope Knight. We bring those services to the table. And on the federal level, we bring benefits and services from the Small Business Administration to the people of Queens so they understand it. That's the education piece. Uh, on the advocacy piece, I advocate for everything from parking problems and misplaced meters and misplaced signs to making sure things like innovation Q&S gets approved, to making sure like that the, the, uh, the projects going on at the JFK redevelopment, um, again, so well led by Donovan Richards and, and Congressman Meeks, we make sure we get our minority women owned businesses front and center for that business. We want to make sure that we build capacity for those firms. So after the airport is done and built, like it was at LaGuardia, that it's getting started now at JFK, those companies have the capacity to be able to go into the private sector and continue to grow and prosper. And we love helping those folks out. Um, on, the, on the last piece of the puzzle, educate, advocate, and then the networking piece. Uh, in 2019, before the COVID, we had like 320 different events all in person. COVID changed everything. 2022 was our breakout year, but we love networking. We love bringing people together and connecting the dots. We've had some great success with getting small little companies that are members of the chamber business and a very, very high level. And we're very, very proud of that. 
Okay, that, that's that's excellent. Tom, Tom uh, tell us a little bit about the launching and the relationship with Nexus. Um, you uh, launched a, like a technical um, support center inside of the Nexus um, site. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because I'm sure our listeners would be excited to hear about it. That's great. So a twofold answer to that question. Number one, the saddest day of my professional life was when Amazon pulled out of Queens. A lot yes. of people in Queens and a lot of people in New York City and New York State worked really hard for that selection. And when they pulled out due to a, a, a distorted cam- campaign of misinformation, we were just devastated, as were people across the borough. I couldn't stop thinking about their, during the COVID having those buildings sh- that should have been built with 25,000 jobs, right? At $150,000 yes. a piece. Sad, sad day. But you know what? Sometimes when you get lemons, you got to make lemonade. So we sat back and we tried to figure out a plan to do a Queens Tech Council. All the reasons that Amazon chose us in the first place all still existed. Our educational system, our diversity, and yes, our transportation system. Amazon folks are really, really smart. They did a ton of research before they chose us. All those reasons still existed. And so we embarked upon the Queens Tech Council. Amazon, Facebook, Google, the Cornell Tech Center, Greater Jamaica Development Corp, right? So... So, so that's that. Put that off to a shelf for a second, right? Um, secondarily, I also believe, and I've made this well known to the community since I got here almost eight years ago, I'd much rather work with people than, 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 than fight with them, right? I, you take just as much energy to argue and, and to have issues than you do to get stuff done, as our mayor says, right? Getting stuff done. So I'm not a doormat. The chamber's not a doormat, right? But end of the day, I want to work with people that sincerely want to work with us. And so I formed bonds with Liz Luskin at the Long Island City Partnership, now being sure. run by somebody else. Also, Hope Knight. Hope and I had lunch together every couple of months at the door, one of our favorite restaurants, building bridges, building, building levels of communication. And when uh, Justin Rogers was appointed interim or acting president when Hope moved up to Albany, I was thrilled. Justin's a really good guy. And yes, so in the spirit of collegiality and working together, I reached out and I said, this Nexus thing is gorgeous. All the seats you have up there. Would you be so kind as to allow the chamber to take a couple of those seats for money, right? We Nothing is free in life, right? Sure, pay for sure. Those, pay for those seats. And we put down like a bulkhead or a beachhead in that building. It is gorgeous. I so know. I went pre- there last week. Oh, I checked it, it out. It's gorgeous. I'm oh, in love with it. And every little amenity you could wish for, whether it's a tech technology and amenity, whether it's the parking down the garage, close to the train, it is gorgeous. And so we have four tech companies in that space. And part of my goal is to make, even though Amazon left, is to make Queens the tech mecca that it ought to be. And it should have been with Amazon, right? So I got four seats uh, at the Greater Nexus in Jamaica with all the services that are there. Those folks get one year of complimentary access complimentary space i've got three in the rockway peninsula and i got plans uh by the end of the second quarter of 2023 to have locations opened up in astoria uh in in in, by the queen's college area and also in downtown flushing so we're just getting warmed up but i was very very proud and very symbolic for me personally and professionally to make that greater nexus the very first one that we opened up yeah, it, it is beautiful. I, I fell in love with the place, and uh, I also want to be able to work with, with you all um, as far as being a black media organization and, um, you know, get together and see what we can do for the community. This is a great first step in doing that, right? We're going to have our little, our little videotaping segment now. I want to share it uh, wide and wide and proud and engage yeah. you more than ever. All right. So, Tom, um, what's next? What's next? Uh, you, you know, obviously the tech center is being uh, rolled out. Uh, where, where do you want to be in five years from now? So in five years, I'd love to have 15 or so, maybe 15 uh, individual tech incubators supported locally by small businesses and large by the educational community. And the second part of that Queens Tech Council is uh, I used to teach entrepreneurship at Farmingdale State College. And one of the things that anybody in the space understands and knows over the course of time is you grow your company to a certain level and then the funding is not there, right? So in yes, addition- to grow, yeah. Right, exactly. As part of our Queens Tech Council, 
We're also uh, trying to raise a form, a Queen's Angel Fund, and try to raise about $40 million. So as those small companies grow and, and proliferate in Queens, right, adding people, adding jobs, uh, making their mark, I want to raise that money to invest in them. And in, in five years, if I could look, we'd have the money raised and we would be investing in those companies throughout Queens County, among other initiatives. But within that tech council initiative, that would be the best one of all. Okay. That's excellent. Yeah. Tom, I'd like to ask you, um, what have you not done yet that you would like to do, whether it's business or personal? That's a really, really good question. On the personal side, I got a great wife and two kids that support me, that support each other, that are living the best lives, and I want to continue to be, you know, the father and the husband that I think I ought to be. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. Um, on the professional side, you know, we've grown the chamber from eight or nine people about eight years ago to like 33, and those 33 folks speak 19 languages. I don't think we need to add a ton more people, but I want to continue to leverage our great relationship with our elected officials and the community to really, really be able to develop additional programming and give back to the community. One thing that might be of interest to you folks, when I first got here, there was not much activity of the Queens Chamber of Commerce in Southeast Queens. Um, and I would argue that it was just, it was just being not, not neglectful, but just out of sight, out of mind type of thing. So I made it my business early, early on to get myself and the chamber engaged in Southeast Queens. So in short order, I was asked to be on the board of the York College Foundation. I love that school. It's a great place doing really, really good work. Um, I'm also on the board of the Rufus King Manor House. Um, Counts, I'm um, sorry, um, uh, Borough President um, Donovan Richards and Congressman Meeks asked me to be on the JFK Bay Development. So to me, it's all about giving back to the small community and getting in. I call it the nooks and crannies of Queens County and make sure no small business is left behind ever, ever. And we're doing, I think, a pretty good job at that. The other part of the equation is diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, people call me sometimes trying to sell me things to get us to be more DEI compliant. Um, you know what? I, I, we're not there yet, but I got to tell you, we're, we, are, we are leaps and bounds amongst other organizations like our own. We are now the most diverse chamber board we've ever been. We are now the most diverse membership we've ever been. And we're also the most diverse staff we've ever been with those 33 fo folks speaking 19 languages. I think we've got a way to go, but I think we've come a long, long way. And I'm exceptionally proud of that. And I think we have the wind at our back for the future growth. Sounds Tom, wonderful. Tom, Tom, I know that you've uh, collaborated with uh, Brooklyn Chamber and some of the other chambers around the city. Um, what do you see in terms of collabor potential collaborative um, efforts uh, around the city that includes Queens, but also may include some of the other boroughs? Um, another really good question, Glenn. So I'm a big believer in, in the ripple and the treble effect of things, right? The pebble and the pond and the ripple effect from that. So during COVID, we put together a weekly, it was one o'clock on every Tuesday with every, and you were part of it, with yes. every um, merchant association, bid, what have you, throughout Queens. And we talked and we laughed and we cried, some of us, right? Because it was terrible, terrible times. But I think we had a great opportunity there to bring people together to have a dialogue and converse, and it worked, and it continues to work. We don't have those calls as frequently as we used to because everybody's really, really busy, but I think everybody in that call knows they can call each other to get assistance and help in any way possible. From that sprung um, the Small Business Resource Network. There's a wonderful woman named Kathy Wild that runs the Partnership for New York City in Manhattan. She called me one day and said, Tom, this is, this is like just before the COVID got really, really bad, just as it was ready to go crazy. If you had a bunch of money, what would you do with it? I'm like, I don't have a bunch of money. She said, if I was able to get you a bunch of money, no number, you know, given, what would right. you do? What's, what's the greatest need? And I said, outreach. The city uh, is surviving. We're not thriving, but we're surviving. And there's a ton of programs and opportunities uh, in city government that we have to spread the word with out in the community. Again, Queens is the largest geographic borough of any of them with 14 city council districts. And so Kathy, uh, Kathy Wild took that to heart 
She went to the other chambers and the five of us banded together as New Yorkers, not as Brooklynites, not as Queens people, Manhattan, Bronx, Staten Island, as New Yorkers first. And we were able to get some funding from a not-for-profit source that allowed us together to hire 22 people as well as some infrastructure to go out and knock and knock on doors. And as I know Glenn knows um, all too well, I'm a really competitive person, right? So at the end of the day, I want to be the best, best of the five boroughs. Simple sure. as that. And frankly, based upon the work that we did, and there was no disrespect to any of the other boroughs, we all worked hard. We shared resources. But I told my team, I want to be number one. I want to be number one because we have the most out there as far as challenges and opportunities, the most diverse borough, the most diverse county in America of 3,000 counties. Many, many people in our communities in Queens don't know English and their inability to get access to wonderful, wonderful programs is diminished because of that. So sure. we speak 19 languages today. And we went out and I told my staff, if they ask for 60% minority women owned, go higher. How high, Tom? Go higher. Just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And to their credit, the team delivered. The entire five borough team delivered. We touched thousands and thousands of small businesses, but that's what it was all about. It was no everybody's everybody's jersey. In the, if you do a, an analogy with sports, it was all New York City. It wasn't just Queens. We were a New York City small business resource network, and we got it done. And I'll go to my grave, especially proud of that effort during that time and all that we got done. Okay, sounds wonderful. Thank you, Tom. We've been speaking with Tom Gret from the Queens, Queens Chamber, Chamber of, of Commerce. Commerce. Right yes. here in Queens, New York. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Tom, for but, coming on our show. But Before you go, let people know how they can get a hold of you, Tom. So the best way to do it is, uh, there's a couple ways, right? So I'm very happy that people call me directly. That phone number, the main number is 718-898-8500. My personal extension is 122-718-898-8500, extension 122, or by email, T is in Tom Gretsch, G-R-E-C-H, at queenschamber.org, or if all else fails, queenschamber.org is our website. Come, explore, learn, and don't be bashful. Life and business are contact sports. So call us, get engaged, happy to help you grow your business, and look forward to assisting you and continue to make Queens the best place to live, work, and play. I agree with you 100%. Glenn, how can people reach you at the, at the bid? They can reach me at 718-291-2110. The Sutphin bid that will be the downtown Jamaica, bid, soon to become the downtown Jamaica bid. Okay, and you can reach me, Lady Pauline, at 646-340-7271 at Our World Media Network. And please don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Our World Media Number One. Thank you, Tom, for Thank being you, on. Thank you, Tom. It's Glenn a and pleasure. Pauline, it's a, it's a privilege and a pleasure to not only know both of you, but consider myself in the same rank with you as hardworking Queens people. Thanks for all you do, and God bless. All right. Thank, thank you. you.